It's 10 paces. It's a Thursday night. I am so boy, how did he get here? It's to be here, says Stabby. And howdy, howdy, howdy. I'm happy to hear it. Thank you for the shrink, Kirby. Makes my job a little easier, as you know. So what I'd like to do tonight, um, I'm in a gaming mood. I'd love to do some before and afters, but let's, uh, I think we're going to work on this while we wait for some folks to, to shuffle on in. Oh, I didn't mean to select that color. Let's one in the pink, two in the shrink. Oh, you know it. You know how to please me. Do I want Thor? Um, always. Obviously, but if they're busy, I, you know, I won't hold it to them. On voice, uh, yeah. If they're willing and able. Meantime, I'm going to draw this, uh, this moon man. And how's everybody out there doing tonight? On this fine Thursday evening. Bow, 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 bow. Was my lounge singer kind of a kind of fill time Im improv impersonation? In the meantime, you can join me here in Dead Man's. Yeah, that's right, Dead Man's. The only, the only place that serves Dead Man's. All right, tip your waitress. So always these fine details I, I struggle with because I do intend to color this piece and I don't know how fine I should end up going, I guess, with line work because I would like to kind of fade out this line work. Um, but I don't want to lose a lot of that minute shading. Also,
let me know how my mic sounds tonight because I'm trying a little something new out and I want to make sure it's working effectively. But hopefully everything's coming through a little cleaner for ya. Doing real work, it's... I mean, I guess I did it to myself. I could just draw a line here and... call that trim, but... You know, looking... Looking for character design here. And there's some... immaculately talented, uh... kind of fantasy artists I've been looking at lately. Um, I'd pull them up right now, but I, uh, I mean, I was looking at them on Twitter and then I, it took me a minute to find them again on Instagram. So as soon as I find them, I'd be happy to, happy to throw them in. Hey there, Predal Tomato, you're on the air! I'm on. Ten paces Welcome! Ten. Long time <gasps> listener. First time caller. Ah, oh, happy to have you here, Tomato. Throat the mic, I'm being told. Throat the mic. Yeah, that's, that's good practice. And uh, don't forget the balls. <laughs> you know, too, too often, too few <laughs> balls are, uh, are fondled. And with your donations, we can help. We can help this crisis. I've helped so many crises in my time. <laughs> that is not an uncommon thing for me to be doing with my time. So, you're hosting this thing, huh? Sure am. This, this ball. That's got to be exciting for you. Uh, it's pretty mundane at this point, but oh, I'm no. still happy to be here. Dude, you have to find excitement in the mundane or you're gonna you're doomed. Ah, dude. Um Was that too did I use too minor a key in my voice there? Or you're doomed, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you hit me with that minor key and it was just like a a Bene Gesserit kind of <laughs> voice command. Well, look, I meant it seriously, but uh, you know, no pressure. Yeah. It's not a not an ordained command. I've never been ordained um, in any capacity. Have you? Uh yes, in the Church of Life and the Church of the Dude. Oh yeah. Um, you ever watch Survivor? Ah uh, yeah, the first couple seasons. There was a guy you would have loved on one of the recent seasons of Survivor. He had tattooed on his ass L I V I N. <laughs> L I V I N, L I V I N, living like La Vida Loca, or yeah, hell yeah, because that was that was his, that was his philosophy to life. His name was Cody, and he looked like one. He <laughs> looks like a Cody. Yeah, I'd say so. He was not Australian, yeah. though he might have been with his uh, behavior, just. Being Cody, uh, he loves the ocean. He went to go climb rocks instead of strategize on multiple occasions. Well, the rocks were there. Mm. If they weren't supposed to be climbed, the producers wouldn't have put them there. No, it's a um, it's an actual st significant statistical percent of survivor players injured frivolously climbing the local scenery. Ah, uh, hell yeah, yeah. Because they all go in there with that. Maybe a little too much can do attitude. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't uh I don't think that there's a 
wrong amount of can-do attitude. I think you have what you have. <laughs> yeah, I'd say too much of a good thing with oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. anything, yeah. Well, the thing about a can-do attitude is uh, I don't think you can change it, you know? Some people have can-do attitudes thrust upon them, but like... And some people have have-not attitudes. <laughs> I think uh, you gotta you gotta listen to those impulses sometimes, and that means climbing rocks, and that means losing Survivor. Yeah, it's. I think my point is, I think he was right to climb that rock and get injured. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, it, you know his name. You're talking about it. I know a lot of their names. And now he's selling bounty. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think I'm going to draw along with you. I've done a little bit of a uh, of, uh, mouse and paint uh, oh, sketching yeah. in my time. So let me open up a, whatever paint we have here. Oh, on my phone. Yeah, maybe. I uh, just started moving in with a friend, so. Oh, congrats! Yeah, but it's been a it's been a sweaty day. I was pouring, man. The old man was snoring. <laughs> you got any other uh, Barney bangers? You got any other favorite uh, children's rhymes to drop? Um. Barney bangers. I mean, it's not quite time to clean up, clean up everybody everywhere. But um, I mean, we could boom, boom, ain't it great to be crazy? Oh my god, boom, boom, ain't it great to be crazy? You're not, you're, uh, you're, you're. Yeah, I'm not a fake right. fan. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're digging in. You're not wearing that Barney shirt because you <laughs> think it's a clothing cuts. brand for sure. <laughs> You have all of them since the EP. I was sporting Barney shirts back in Nam, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Had some real DIY playtime stuff. All right, bro. Um, let's talk about this Moon Man. Are the yeah, uh, it's... audience aware of your Moon Man? Um, a little bit, I think. You've worked on it's it before. It's the Moon Man. It's the Moon Man? Yeah. As far as we're um, concerned, uh, from the D&D &D campaign, one shot. Right, right. I, uh, I was wondering if you'd ever told, uh, told them all about that. It's a, it's, a, it's a sick design. I saw that and I was like, oh, he looked really cool. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. I know I couldn't realize it in, in words as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you, you'd want to drop some, some science on them. This is something you have to practice. If you want to talk D&D, I can go for hours. Uh, oh, have, always. This is something you have to practice as a DM, in my opinion. We're going to disagree on some stuff. I've, I've got some pretty strong D&D &D opinions. But in my <laughs> opinion, as a DM, you have to practice describing things. You have to do it to yourself. Because um, if, you're, if you're only doing it when you have an audience, you're taking three, four, five times as long to get good at it. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it's, it's like performance. A lot of the good performers do practice in a mirror or, you know, practice talking to an inanimate object. Right. Um, I think probably Dungeon Master is my life's calling. I think I have found the reason I was born when I'm behind a DM screen. Ah, the Gygax calls. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I like, um, my brain likes juggling all those things at once. I, uh, I, I often don't have enough to focus on. And, Fair. And, uh, and it's, it, it, it requires this creative spark. It, it, it cultivates the, the instant gratification um, 
like constantly as a dm you are constantly getting this immense immediate rather feedback um it's, it's not something no other creative well not maybe no other creative outlet but you know um <laughs> certainly not like writing painting you know a lot of these isolated creative outlets and as somebody who has always been talented with words but has absolutely zero patience I'd much rather DM a, a session of Dungeons and Dragons than like work on writing a book, you know? Yeah, it's it hits those same places that improv does because mm. it's a lot well, it of it's off the show. Yeah. Well, yeah, but you have an audience right there. So, mm. and if the audience is, you know, your friends, it's a lot easier to gather than. You know, say in a packed theater for a stage show. Yeah. But also you're getting more intimate feedback for that, you know, for what you're putting out there. There couldn't have been more of a difference when we moved our, our game back to in person and I could look people in the eyes and I could pretend to smoke my pencil like a long cigarette holder. You know, <laughs> uh, really revitalized the game for me in a lot of ways. You're a, you're a dame with an, a complicated backstory, I tell ya. Her backstory was simple, but she was a complicated dame. Uh, Legs that I made went a, on for miles. <laughs> I made a white, fluffy female cat uh, who owned like this big emporium shop in one of the major cities in our D&D campaign. And uh, she, like, personally dealt with most of the customers, unless they were very busy, and, like, charmed them and sold them exotic magical goods and stuff. And so she had, like, a red cocktail dress and a cigarette holder, and she uh, was flirtatious, and uh, she was a memorable character. Memorable enough that uh, she was saved from the, the city's ultimate demise. Oh, hell yeah. By the yeah. players? or By the players, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it was a complicated uh, moment. I've done a lot to uh, cultivate strife within the party. This is the second act of uh, their story. And uh, mm. because we're doing a 1 to 20, and um, they're level 15 now. And uh, oh, wow. ever, since, ever since we've sit, we, ever since we've hit the new continent, um, I have, I've intentionally separated them as much as I could. And I've I've steered them in that direction, uh, you know, to a degree. Yeah. You guys, aren't, you guys aren't 16 now. This is a bit they do. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, they, they saved the world. Like, 1 to 10 was they saved the world. That's sort of what's prescribed in the, uh, the Dungeon Master's Guide, is by level 10, you are a world-saving hero. You are like a superhero, you know? Somebody everybody knows, and if something falls out of the sky, who they're expecting to come catch it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so now it, you're it, getting it was, into, into the end game. Yes. A second threat has come, and uh, they are... Uh, they're finding out that their lives are going to either end or they're going to go on, and I'm trying to make both of those things just terrifying for them. That's tough. Uh, <laughs> like, motivating characters. Uh, that's what I really appreciated about playing with you all, is that, you know, two of you were DMs, and I think I've said this exact sentiment on this show before, but... Um, Two of you were DMs, and everybody else were experienced players, at least. And so, like, you you understood how to kind of keep things moving. And it wasn't as much onus on me, and I really appreciated that. Um, you know, lucky for you, I can't sit still. That's, uh, <laughs> that's something that's deep within me. But, uh, no, yeah, I yeah, do know what your you bones. mean. You got them rattling bones. I think with uh, D&D being the art that it is, you can be a good or bad player as much as you can be a good or bad DM. And Absolutely. I think ultimately, um, 
that moving along the story in some direction is what a good player will do. Now, mm. ultimately, it is a good, it is a DM's job to create good players. Yeah. But uh, there are people it. that come in in bad faith to a game. And I don't even mean, like, to attack somebody, but, like, uh, they don't, uh, they don't mean well, really. You know, they, 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 they think the whole thing's dumb. And those people, you can't really reach or anything. Or there are people mm -hmm. that, you know, they are competitive enough that you, you can do nothing about the facts that they're going to be. Uh, they're going to make a scene if they don't get their way or something like that, you know? But, like, other than that, you, you are the one whose hands it is in to make sure that they, uh, they want to, uh, to play motivated characters. Yeah. I think... Um, that's, a, that's a tough task. I got really hard advice from someone online um, that I took very personally and swore not to utilize, but it ended up being so true that I had to move past that. And that is that to say, hey, look at the, you are in this town. What do you do to your players? And that's how you start it is not great DMing. And like, it is, it is your fault to some degree as much as theirs if you create a town square and you put them in it with no context and you say well what do you guys do you know um, mm -hmm. unless they've asked you for a town square uh your job's not done yet <laughs> yeah you've got to create a more color colorful world in which they can move i think no matter how well you describe the town square you have to either give them options or or, or enact story upon them mm-hmm generally a player no no I, I suppose a really a really experienced player who is feeling very comfortable and supported because that's such a huge part of how you get role play out of somebody um so you you get a player who's played before and they're they're they, they feel safe to open up in the way that you are opening up by doing any real role playing and uh you know, it, then then you have people who will be like, are there any, you know, is there a church to my God here? Because it is extremely important that every day my character, you know, gets down before a depiction of their deity, you know, onto their knees mm -hmm. or something. And like, that's, you're, you, you are being given a gift at that point, though. That shouldn't be your expectation. Yeah, that's fair. That's entirely fair. And maybe that's something I've been great about in past past sessions. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you know what? I had to learn that somebody, like I said, an older person said it very rudely to me. I'm like, my my players are so bad; they don't want to do anything. You know, I give them a cool town, and they're like, "There's nothing. What do we What do we want?" But and the guy was like, "You're not DMing right if they have no interest in doing anything you've described. You haven't given them much, but uh, you know, a skybox." Yeah. Um, but I mean, it can be real pretty. We, uh, Jimmy props to him as my main DM. Uh, he described this city and he made it just so well that I, I had such a hard time engaging with his main plot, um, for a moment, just because I thought we were staying there forever. <laughs> it was so cool. It was just this, uh, half human, half dwarven city that was like, uh, in a cave, like been built beneath a mountain. and. The deeper it went, the more dwarven it became, um, and the humans were like in the mercantile, and you know, uh, passersby, vacate not vacation tourism, I suppose, <laughs> fantasy tourism <laughs> districts, you know. And there was like That's tension there, and we did a mission for a council who had you know factions and stuff, and uh, you know maybe it's a criticism of him. I, I certainly don't mean it as a cruel one that. Uh, that he perhaps overpromised um, by doing the town too well. That's, and I, I mean, that is a good, like, you know, it, it is yeah. wrong. Like, it did lead me to believe something that I probably shouldn't have, but that could be just on me. I'm not sure. You can't, you can't always account for, I mean, this circles back to everything we've been talking about. You can't always account for how evocative what you're going to do necessarily is. Like, you can put effort in, but you don't, it's a two-sided story. 
That's that's very true. That's very true. In literature, though, there's this idea of planting and payoff, right? Um, mm-hmm. Where subversion can be the payoff, um, but don't be planting anything that you don't uh, intend to do anything with. I, I had to learn that, that, that when I wrote my, my novel, because mm-hmm. uh, I have this character in it that uh, probably does nothing. It, like it occurred to me that it was it was kind of an interesting person. The novel deals with the afterlife. It occurred to me that it was kind of an interesting person who stayed who manned the front desk at a hotel for ghosts, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, the thing is, the the concept developed far enough that she became obsolete. Ultimately, is all I'm trying to say. Um, and that sort of. Uh, that's sort of the kind of thing you want to avoid. But I, I don't know that he really did that because you will put something in front of a player. Everybody's got player brain and DM brain, you know, and they don't interact this, like as well as they ought to a, a lot of the time. And, you know, player brain, you put a, say, a bridge somewhere. Uh, I mean, DM brain, you put a bridge somewhere, you're thinking, because I put a chasm there and they have to cross. And players might be thinking, what's that bridge going to do? <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, no, they're just by a river. That's that's the important part. But you, you know, you think I put this bridge here as a trap or you think it's, you know, this or that. It's. And that's that's sort of an example. I mean, that kind of happened. I, I did other things to discourage my players from using a bridge. It's sort of the notorious uh, the door meme in the sort of D&D community that doors are something that uh, players characters struggle with. Yeah, I mean, like. It's it's a troublesome dynamic in that anything you describe has, you know, it has value. Mm-hmm. But if there's, like, a general mistrust, just maybe even through just, like, familiarity with the game. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's meta, metatextual knowledge, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, I don't think it's an avoidable thing in D D. It's actually a pretty hot topic discussion, metagaming and uh also uh power gaming, you know, where people feel strongly about, well I should build the absolute best character I can, and people feel strongly about uh making major to minor choices that are for their personal emotional roleplay satisfaction. Hmm. And uh, I mean ultimately there's never a right answer to a question like that, I guess. I do think anyone truly committed to making the best character they can will all make the same character. Whatever weird peasant canon thing, you know, that does a million da- or infinite damage or whatever, you know, they always someone always figures something out. Right. And I mean, I have a lot of issues with uh game meta as a whole. For me personally, it takes away enjoyment of the game, but I understand people wanting to engaging in it fully and wanting to do something well. Yeah, yeah. It's I think it's not as detached from role playing as people say it is, you know? Like oh, uh, not at all. I mean they w- we're working they on want a, to be so powerful. Yeah, we're working on a numbers built system that kind of unifies all of our actions and everything in D&D or really any tabletop. Yeah. And that's, I that's think that's another those... uh, onus on the DM is to try and create things where everyone can shine in that regard, but also kind of maybe proposing things where not everyone's going to necessarily excel. Mm-hmm. And I guess yes. that's where the difficulty comes in. Mm-hmm. No, like, uh, does it matter if if you have a stealth uh, debuff to your heavy plate armor if you never make them sneak? You know, mm-hmm. like it doesn't. Um, and so if you know if if you as a DM never ever never ever make your party sneak because they're bad at it, you're going to get rogues in plate armor. You know, a screaming war cries as they stab someone in their sleep. Yeah, well, they had an advantage. 
Yeah, and I mean, hey, it's it it happens. Even light sleepers sleep heavy sometimes, you know. But uh, that's I that's live for stuff like that. Not not necessarily like making it a a mainline thing, but I I love for my players to kind of to actually pull one over on me. Oh yeah, no. Um, I guess that's where a lot of like the the negative habits we are previously talking about kind of come from is that like general distrust i think uh people make the relationship between dm and player unnecessarily combative um, yeah it like it, it's a collaborative story it's not necessarily dm versus everyone you know, everyone is playing. Everyone is doing what they can. And sometimes it is a board game in the sense that you want something, someone else wants something, and one of you is going to make that happen. Mm -hmm. um, even, even as the DM. I'll give you an example. Now, this is not a personal thing, but uh, one of my players I really wanted to kill. And uh, it was because they had started to die, right? So I, I had given the players long ago this invisibility cloak. Um, normally those, are, those require you to attune them, and you know you can only attune so many items. But I had made it unattunement, no attunement, but uh, it was always on. You had to find mm -hmm. it if you dropped it, and it never turned off, no matter what. Um, they almost lost it twice before this. And then the rogue, wearing the unstoppable the, the you know the infinite invisibility cloak got put through we'll just say a thresher like uh <laughs> very briefly without doing any of the flavor it was one of those big farming tools that mills mills like corn yeah and died and was invisible oh, <laughs> like cool. the body was invisible and i wanted them to die they actually they managed to find the body and they managed to save the character. And I did not cheat. I did not tip the scales. But I did want them to die, you know? And I, I, was, I was hoping that they would die. Yeah. I mean, you're still welcome to have hopes and aspirations as a, as a world maker. Mm -hmm. Because you're making a story and you want, you want interesting stuff to happen. Well... The full context for that is that the character had just secretly made a deal with the last big bad to give them the city that they were going to conquer if they faked their death long enough to get on with the main quest. And like, because they were, because the player was afraid, or the character was afraid, I mean to say, that the entire party would die at their hands and that the time was wasting with the main. Let's say the moon from Majora's Mask is coming down for brevity. Yeah. And, like, they're doing this side quest, and the player character decides, I am going to talk privately with this creature. They had tele telepathic abilities. And say, you fake your death, we will leave. We are the only thing stopping you from taking this city. Uh, and then we will, you know, we will save the world, and we can deal with you later if we have to. And uh, so the character had done that, had, had lost their good alignment, had, you know... And had done it secretly, telling nobody. And then, uh, for a freak thing to have killed them, to leave that complicated legacy, I was really excited about the idea. Yeah. Um, uh, but they lived. And uh, we've done so many things with it now. I can't talk about the future. Okay. I mean, this is the, this is the campaign that's still going on, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is on the side of players. Brit once initiative Mulligan. rolls. Ah, uh, once initiative rolls happen, and it's them against the dice. Um, I like, and I think Baldur's Gate may have influenced me in more recent times. Uh, yeah. Um, certain actions like. You can't just sit there and roll to succeed. Either make it happen or don't. But like certain mm -hmm. actions, just kind of having 
weight in the in the moment. Yeah. What do you mean? Um. So maybe it's a perception check, and it's not consequential to progressing the story or whatever. But yeah. you know, having little bonus things hidden away, hidden behind dice rolls or something. And so if it's instant space, like either notice it or don't you don't Yeah, you don't no, absolutely take time to search around for whatever. Or I, to... now I, I I'm pretty sure that's rules as written, so I, I don't think you're off base at all on saying that like you can't have in a party of six, six investigation checks. You know. Right. Uh, at some point or you know what? Here's the thing. You're the DM. You just don't let them do that. Like mm -hmm. suddenly a goblin guard is closer or something. And you know what? If they if they want to keep fighting strays and doing several investigation checks, then you know we're 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 getting somewhere where I'm comfortable. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's funny because I, I swear I'm I'm a great DM. I <laughs> I uh I'm very proud of my work when I DM and uh I I know for a fact I'm good at it. Uh but I, I am fun, I am genuinely pretty permissive, you know. I I always sound like such a hard ass when I just talk about D D. Sorry, I was uh I didn't mean to cast that on you at all. I was responding to what was going on in chat. Oh no 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 no, I didn't think yeah. you did. No. No, oh, okay. I I was I was simply musing. I, I feel like I I come off a bit. Uh, sorry, that was the the mic stand. A bit hard ass sometimes when I talk about D and D. Like, well, no, that is objectively the wrong way to do it, or whatever. I do feel that way sometimes, you know. But like when I when you're at my table, it's not about what's objectively the wrong or right way to do anything. You know, we're trying to have fun. Exactly. Yeah, and I mean it's it's a tough role to assume because you're. You're not only trying to balance out player experience, but also game design, I guess. Uh, I mean, most of the games have been designed for you, but like, it's those, it's that muddy middle element that makes things really tricky. Hey, it's absolutely game design. I completely agree. Um, You are designing these encounters, unless you're using a module. I guess maybe you're not doing any game design if you're using a module, mm -hmm. but you're still running a game. You are very yeah. much saying, hey, uh, they're doing this, I have to do this. Um, you're designing their experience, uh, even, even, uh, even running modules, which honestly, does, they don't do as much work as you might think they do if you're not a DM. No, you still have a lot to keep track of. You are the the one crunching a lot of those numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, since we're talking to D&D, &D, give me like a, a race in a class or some kind of uh, some kind of boogan that I could draw. Boogan? I don't know what that is. A monster. An oh, enemy, okay. a foe. I'd love to do a race in a class. I like character design a lot, like okay. personified character design. That's my fa favorite in art. Yeah. Uh, you want me to roll to it, me. or are you like me to just uh, pick one? Uh, pick a race in a class. I'll, okay. I'll doodle it right here. Okay, let me tell you the story <laughs> of this <laughs> Warforged. Okay. Cleric, right? It's a warforged cleric of light. Yeah, he was he was designed as a battle medic, and he never uh, he never died, you know, like his comrades did. And uh, eventually, his squad was wiped out, and he lived. And he wandered into the underdark, and as a healer and a provider of light and a knower of ways. He became this silent, hireable, mechanical guide through the Underdark. Okay. That's one of my characters. If you could draw that, that'd be cool. Yeah, I love that. And he's, he's so old, 
and his whole thing is love. He uh, he had family. He lost them, and he doesn't want to let himself have family again. You know. Yeah, I love that a lot. I like doing that a lot with uh, Warforged, especially mm-hmm. kind of making them, you know, vestiges of a a time past. I um, like, go ahead. Oh, uh, I had one. We were doing what was supposed to be a one shot, but they rarely ever are. Yeah. Uh, and I made a Warforged Druid who, yeah. you know, in time was designed to explore deep ocean. Uh, that's and that's so already awesome. He went out and completed his duty, and then he came back, and, you know, the world had changed significantly because he was gone for so long. Oh, so, like the sort of Twilight Zone space traveler thing. Yeah. So that's awesome. by the time he got back, yeah, you know, everything was different, but he completed his programming or whatever. That would be and so then, fun to play in a canon Forgotten Realms campaign where you could have studied on, like, two generations ago what the world was supposed to have been like. Mm-hmm. But because it was for a one-shot, like, you know, it was... We are mm-hmm. higher level, and he was kind of adopted by these adventurers... But it'd be a really fun character to bring back for a, you know, like a lower level kind of back into the, for like, Origins kind of story. Yeah, I, um, I have a couple of characters that I have played that I would play again. Uh, The character I played in your game was a character um, I'm definitely going to play again at some point. Hell yeah. I would love to do another little one shot, especially with those characters. Yeah, yeah. Mask and uh, Whisper and uh, see if I can remember the rest of their names. Uh, Tony Tulips. And uh, I don't remember. Is that everybody? No, Jimmy had a character. Mm -hmm. I don't remember Jimmy's character. Do you want a hint? Yeah. Uh, It starts with a J. It's with a J? I still don't remember. Jesus? Javier. Oh, oh, Javier! Yeah! From, like, Red Dead, yeah. I mean, I know it's a real name. (laughs) But... (laughs) That was my thought, I remember. Jesus is also a real name. Uh, well... (laughs) (laughs) There's some speculation about that. Yeah. We've got opinions on that one a little bit. (laughs) So, uh, <laughs> I love Clerics of Light. I have played in my time as a D- as a and d player three Clerics of Light in tabletop games. And uh, I'm forever DM most of the time, so like... <laughs> yeah. What is um, it about light that, you know, draws you in so much? It's, a, it's something of spiritual resonance to me, honestly. It's, um... I had a friend who was really into you know, this woo-woo stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, to get closer, I went to like this uh, spirit shop with them, and uh, I read all the things about the spiritual stones, and uh, you know, I picked one, you know, as a way of sort of opening up, and uh, it was malachite, which is about pathfinding and about answer seeking, and oh, see, that I like is five E more. <laughs> hey, I do too, bud. I do too. I'm one <laughs> of those guys. Um But anyway, so I like uh I like the way that light implies being a seeker. The way that and the way that light uh it cult it, it, it propagates that feeling of warmth that you're meant to feel from religious experience that that light is there to warm you to guide you to show you is something that i can genuinely vibe with you know and Mm -hmm. uh beyond that it's just like uh it, it it magically uh you know like nuts and bolts wise the magic flavors really well as light or already is light 
Right. Um, and, and my first one was that Underdark, uh, that Underdark healer robot. So. I take uh, that. Obviously, Light was a great one for the Underdark. Like, the, I specifically made it as an Underdark character. And anytime someone throws me an Underdark game, that's who I'm going to play. Like, I haven't played one again since. I gotcha. I like that. It's a really fun character. And yeah, I yeah. like the, the deeper connection there. Yeah, I've played a lot of Clerics of Light. The other one was, um, her name was Gianna Pennywhistle, and she was a gnome, and she just can't, she, you just, she's like a cat, you just can't keep her out of anything. And, <laughs> like, her benevolent, constant questing and breaking of boundaries, but in a way that Drew genuinely is rooted in, at the very least, you know, foolish open-heartedness. Uh, made her god uh, choose her, bless her, and she uh, she literally just checks out her curiosities and like is guided by her deity to cause things that are helpful to happen. That's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, she has like this this super curly hair down to like her mid back as a gnome, and it's like the size of her, you know. Hmm. It's like got twigs and, and 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 leaves in it and stuff. So yeah, it's like two feet tall. Yeah, yeah. Two gnomes feet are long. three, I think. Gotcha. I think gnomes and goblins are the same. I don't remember. Yeah, there's there's ranges. Whatever sounds fun. Um, the guide is what I called him, and people didn't know he could speak. He refused to even acknowledge sort of sapience. And it was only when he got closer to people or through repeated jobs that he, re he got rid of his translator or whatever, the, the, inter the intermediary, and started dealing with him directly and saying, okay, yes, I can speak. Just call me the guide. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he has a full name. He was given a human-style name by his commander in his first army, and it was Rampart Ironbrow. Ooh, um, I love that's, that. That's something, that's something he would never share with anybody. I've ever, I've already told everybody because the first time I played him was like six years ago or something. Mm hmm. And I was looking at the shield and I was like, "Ah, oh, you got, you got, you got Ramparts shield." I figured cleric and shield's always mm -hmm. a good build on a cleric, but it also seemed fun from a design standpoint. I was gonna give him a mace too, and that maybe largely Baldur's Gate inspired. But is there a particular weapon? That I mean, Rampart. Uh, uh, Rampart was a classic mace and uh, mace and shield cleric. Yeah, uh, he used his natural really armor. The, the light domain. Yep, because it's 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 like a torch, but it's a it's a mace because mm -hmm. he he lights it and holds it forward. It also has a you know a sun or star. He's out there like to. Visage. Yeah, I don't think I chose his god. I wasn't as deep into the sauce as I am these days. Um, but uh, yeah, it was you know it was it was functionally a torch for him, and his uh, his big thing was just he wanted to die in the field. He didn't. He wasn't going to sit still and wait, and he wasn't going to destroy himself. You know. Mm hmm. And uh, so, like, I, I built him. Like, we got a certain number of like magic items and stuff, and I gave him like. Uh, the cube that gives you a force field so that I could, like, trap explosions and stuff. And, like, wow, that's cool. Because he just, he just wants the next person in his life to die to be him. That's the most important thing to him. That's really neat. Mm -hmm. It's fun to have selfless characters, and I mean, it, again, depends on the DM. Yeah. Because they they may not uh, have the same well they definitely don't have the same motivations as you but not yeah, all of sure. them may savor player death yeah. in the way that a deathbound player may be looking to <laughs> yeah no uh, Rampart I mean, maybe he wouldn't have died. Maybe he would have found a reason to live instead. But he, he just wanted to go out the right way. 
Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, he's lost person after person, you know, because it's right. the Underdark, and that's what he does for a living. And also has outlived everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's one of my favorites. Definitely going to play him again. Awesome. Just drawing a face in MS Paint over here. Just a typical human face? Anything notable about it? Uh, really strong features. Uh, like a very square jaw. Uh, thick. Uh, I would say compassionate eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> used to uh, in high school like I would do a lot of MS Paint doodles like mouse and yeah yeah I mean I was never any good at it. it it's very tough it's hard I've I've had multiple multi hundred dollar tablets die on me so I've done a lot of MS Paint doodling <laughs> Cause, I would uh, draw a lot of uh the, Chuck Norris sees because Ultimate Showdown because was of the memes and stuff. relevant yeah. at the time, yeah. We are old, brother. Mold Yusuke. Yeah. Uh, have you seen a Big Top Burger? Uh yes. I with the, I'm old, I always think of um in near near the end of season two. Uh the the, guy, the character Chessere is giving the character Steve a, a trick backpack that everyone can tell is a trick, you know. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm, I'm old now. I'm I'm ancient now. I'm good. <laughs> I'm just an old backpack vendor. <laughs> and I think about that anytime I think about being old, because uh, you know it was Worthy Kids. So like the animation when he said I'm ancient now is very like withered and shaky. You know, a yeah. little bit of almost a SpongeBob gag. Very expressive, just in the mm. moment. Where the kids is unreal. It mm. extremely talented guy. Yeah, uh, he does all of Big Top Burger and all of his animations, from what I understand, in Blender. I know. Like even the ones yeah. that look like, uh, like the Franklin and Bass animations. Rank and bass, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're done in Blender with texture effects. I know, I know, it's wild. This guy's node nose is evading me like you wouldn't believe. You gotta catch it. I literally want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Anime nose. Oh, that's so ugly. <laughs> I accidentally oh, yeah, gave him that. already drawn some, like, American... Early anime pig nose. <laughs> you know oh. what I mean? Where you see both, both bottom nostrils. <laughs> Just two nostrils, that's the nose? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'll have to show you. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, no pressure at all, but if you'd, like, what you're working on featured on stream let me know we can make that happen yeah, sure let's do it all right um are you familiar with the ninja setup nope uh go to <laughs> uh i'm gonna mute myself from the, the fine fine viewers out there give me just a moment folks Oh, okay. Now, I'm on Aaron's computer. I should have told you that. General. I, I think Aaron can help me. If you want uh, to go back and just fill...
Okay. He's getting a new ninja set up. No. Oh, uh, maybe. I don't know what I'm doing. He wants to put my uh, MS Paint window on his screen. I accidentally opened Ninja Turtles. <laughs> oh, good call. So fucking smart, man. He's talking to me, so I think. Video ninja. He says, use Joe's ninja. Going general. In the real I'm not in the real one. Can you type it to me? Uh, no, I guess you can't. Yeah, folks, we're going we're gonna to set up for a minute uh, here. Do I need to make a room? Bye. Don't fret about us, none. I'm gonna get back to it. Ooh, I do not like this liner. Don't worry, folks, we're getting you situated here. There we go. There we go. Welcome back. Uh-oh. I... Yeah. No, that was all me. Something. There are certain controls that get really weird. Oh, I love that. <laughs> you should have it listen lifting weights. The strongest nose of all. The quiet, contemplative nose. Here you go. Uh... D&D, probably. But that's only based off of... Yeah. I think I'm just gonna sketch this dude out. Because lining... I don't tend to carry a lot of value with my lining. Maybe that's what I'll try and do. I'll try and do like a sketchier... Like I would with a uh, an ink brush or something. Oh, nice.
Mm -hmm. You're able to carry a lot more weight with each stroke. And so if you're working with thin lines, like you're not getting that that kind of shadow behind behind each thing that does a lot to convey a three-dimensional object. Yeah, I mean, lifelong learner, right? Well, I appreciate you sharing it here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, especially early on of this show, was me uh, just groping Dakota's mind because, you know, he went to comic book college. <laughs> Regular Joseph Smith meme. <laughs> His hair is made of fuck. <laughs> I'm fuck man. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're drawing a, a certified badass, you gotta make that noise. Ah, oh, beans. Things got shuffled around when I was uh, futzing with audio controls. Oh, good. So I mean, it wasn't that long ago. That's all right. We were just getting yeah. back in our groove anyway. And this all our cool talk about fuck man. Yeah, they missed the how I, the, I drew white Jesus accidentally, and now I have to draw <laughs> fuck man as penance. <laughs> That's you yeah, caught up now. That's the Lord the... gang. Penance the elder fucks. Yeah, that's right. I have. Uh, I'm not allowed to swear any longer because of my uh, my sins. Like until <laughs> until I've proven myself, of course. Yeah, it's like a vow of silence. All right, pencil probably to suggest tight haircut because I need to have an, a shaved area so we're learning on yeah. the job today boys <laughs> a couple ways to go about that I won't say that I'm any good at them but just like a few implied lines and uh, right. value Fuck helps a lot uh, 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 what, uh, what, what is he? Uh, he's, he's sort of a possum person, you know? Ah, uh, I see. So it's okay if, he's, uh, if his head shave sides are a little scraggly. Yeah. Well, he's doing it himself, and it's with one cut off half of a PBR can. <laughs> Where did he. I can see. So I don't why, know why he's been in my house. And I don't know why he's been taking my shaving equipment, but did you did you have a party? No, 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 no. I just uh, I shave well, with I mean, a PBR can. I don't know why he. I don't know why he did that from me. Tends to show up at parties and ends up staying for days longer than the party is. All right. These eyes are not fuckman's eyes. <laughs> Those are oh, white you... Jesus' eyes. Those can't stick around. <laughs> <laughs> you got those fuck man eyes. How about that?
Thor is bat. Lol. I don't know what that means, I'm afraid. Oh, guys. Uh, yeah. yeah, vampirized. Yeah. Oh, you sure uh, are. I've got 17 bat bucks, too. So I'm winning. Oh, uh, they're bar bucks. Did it, oh, they're did they're, they're not bar. bar bucks. They're actually... No! Goodbye. Well, am I still... Do I still have easy a bat? Easy come, easy that go. That's, uh, that's what uh, Fuckman says, because he's always fucking and pissing. <laughs> he's like, huh, that was an easy come. <laughs> now I had an easy go to prevent STI. <laughs> Fuckman, Fuckman takes fucking very seriously. Yeah, Absolutely, the safest sex. What do you, what, what, I'm sorry, what impression did you get of Fuckman? <laughs> well, I mean... I assumed he didn't wear a condom. Oh, no, no, no. Even for anal, Travis. <laughs> I'm proud of fuck, man. Yeah. It's safe. It's safe. Good on him. You yeah. know, I'm really coming around on this fuck, man guy. <laughs> That's good. Uh, fuck, man's coming around to you. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Safely. We took that. I tell you what, that intermission really changed the vibe. Sure did. Oh, that's right. I drew Mormon Jesus. That was <laughs> yeah. the problem. I realized I was drawing blonde, white Jesus, and I decided to change my path. Well, yeah. What other Jesus is there? <laughs> don't now. Don't you forget about me? Let's not. <laughs> <laughs> let's not dive into that particular can of worms. Uh, Fuckman is piss yellow, of course. Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> jaundiced to hell. Uh, what do you think the last non-alcoholic beverage that Fuckman uh, mouth-fucked was? That's what he calls drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I should have clarified. Hey, man, watch me mouth-fuck this beer. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna say I'm it was... so glad my parents have no idea what I do with myself. <laughs> I was gonna say Listerine, but that's alcoholic. Um, the last one, it was an ice latte that somebody bought for him. <clears throat> okay, I think that is a really good answer. Especially with the new information about his uh, safe sex, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think you really incorporated that well. Wow, you were really safe in bed last night. Let me buy you a latte. <laughs> hey, man. If that's not how your experiences are going, <laughs> it's probably not the safety. You deserve you know, getting better. in the way. <laughs> I uh, no, you know, honestly, safe. I mean, that's why I put graphic cones under my pillows in bed. <laughs> it's also how you learned you weren't the princess of the next next door kingdom. Yeah, I slept like she a could baby. feel. Uh... <laughs> it would literally be like she was in hell if somebody put <laughs> an air tra a traffic cone in her room. <laughs> <laughs> She's like ah. I can feel it. The it's actually the it's actually not orange burns my skin. Yeah, it's actually not the uh, the shape or anything. It's just the like class that the object comes from. Peas are for poor people, and that's why she couldn't sleep. <laughs> I can only sleep sleep with the most luxurious golden gooses in my room. Yeah, you see these uh, swoopy Colgate eyebrows I'm giving the fuck man? Oh, hell yeah. They're literally pasted on. That's a good one. I don't think you have a good forehead shape for uh, Rampart here. Oh, look at him. Well... 
he uh i think the eyebrows are too expressive like yeah to, uh, maybe flatten them out yeah like keep them where they are but uh make like the that. rest of the head meet stoicism of a robot face mm -hmm. and that's largely in part of their lack of eyebrows you're not wrong you're not wrong i mean yeah it is it is that he has a brow he has iron for a brow you know it wasn't because yeah. they put iron eyebrows on him. That is more of a cruel prank than an honored name. <laughs> like they just glued eyebrows <laughs> onto him and they just started calling him Iron Bra. That's just bullying. Hey, Iron Bra. <laughs> I mean, I've done the same thing to my refrigerator. What do you call your refrigerator? Uh, doof butt. Doof because butt. I stuck magnets to I, it that I, said doof butt. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. I was going to say, I fail to see <laughs> how a pair of eyebrows makes someone a doof butt. But if they literally say it, I mean, who am I to, to disagree? Now that he's fuck man, he has to have an upper lip, too. Oh, yeah. So he can give you those fuck me lips. That's exactly why. It's whenever they mouth out the words, fuck me. You're uncanny sometimes. Do um, you know the worst thing about paint? Uh, exaggerated line placement in the demo. You know what I mean? While you're laying it down uh, before they apply it. It's because it's not a good tool. No, not at all. Because I mean, people, I think it's people, using people like use a, it magnificently, but... I think it's using kind of a rough... Well, no, it's still... Yeah, I think it's, a, I think it's sort vector, of a demo of the, of the but... line before they commit it. And for some reason, it's thicker, which is a, a pain in the ass when you're taking... Oh, yeah, it's so always at the maximum thickness that mm -hmm. the tool can be. And so you're, you know, since you're using the corner pixels to uh, clean up, you're you're getting you're you're, un, you're doing nothing. You're you're recoloring an area that's already colored because the corner pixels mm -hmm. aren't actually where they said they were. Yeah, and a lot of uh, a lot of programs have things that kind of deal with that. Uh, Paint doesn't, unfortunately. Um, just kind of that that fuzz that happens from a lot of. Interpolation, I think, is what it is. Where, or just like a lot of the softness that a lot of brushes have. It's very strange. I think it's a rounding thing. I think from a distance, yeah. people like how it looks because it rounds out. Ah, oh, fuck, That's man, exactly looks rougher it. and rougher the further you pull out. It softens and kind of naturalizes the the brushes. You're gone. So the further out it goes like the more it kind of blends between the exterior colors and the color you have selected well that's wank nonsense yeah i mean there are often ways around it um like in this it's called uh anti-aliasing mm. an anti-wank setting they might have it on this yeah You just gotta pray the wank away. Fucking eyebrow. You tried eating cornflakes. Bless you. I'm allergic to that kind of thing, dude. <laughs> Corn or flakes? Anything that would stop me from masturbating. Ah. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry to have introduced it. You I had no I... way. You had no way of knowing. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, um, I. Good. I should have put signs up, though. It's some potential like, anti masturbatory yeah, is... zone. Just this is a zone that might turn you off. Yeah, it'd be nice to be. <laughs> I need to know in advance. Anytime I'm not going to be aroused. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's important. I I mean, I don't carry an EpiPen. Yeah. Well, and that's that's the thing. And few few do. You know, people talk about t- t- talk a big game about caring about their fellow man. Carry Narcan, carry an EpiPen, mm-hmm. and carry it is your pills du- It is your absolute... <laughs> your ED homies. ED homies. That's what you've got to uh, make uh, make your Discord. <laughs> your Discord followers. <laughs> you hear that? My eccentric Discord homies? <laughs> For sure, it's just I'm ED. <laughs> what do you mean dysfunction? Dysfunctioning just fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awful. <laughs> it's the worst. But it may just materialize. The pig nose was the only part I kept. Ooh, I like those X eyes. I used the line tool. You could be on the front of a poison bottle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Mr. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be like Mr. Fuck, kids. You wanna end up dead? Cause if you fucking cross me. <laughs> he lost all his hemoglobin through his pee hole. No way. Don't fuck too hard, kids. Oh, this is so much better. I've got to, <laughs> I've got to erase the uh, mouth. Yellow erase, of course. <laughs> Does uh, paint have layer tools yet? No, no layer tools. I guess, you know, it hasn't ever really been like a huge focus of theirs. But with no. how, how fervent Microsoft is to get everybody on like the, the Microsoft fucking everything. Mm-hmm. Hey, they're not uh, as bad as would... uh, Zuck on that. Yeah. Zuck's waiting for that uh, mega app like China has to hit so that he can, you know, really, really hit the big time. But Microsoft's really aggressive about it to where every time I have to set up a new computer at work, it's very troublesome because in setting up a new computer, you have to sign in with a Microsoft account. Oh, Microsoft accounts are the worst. They really are. Yeah. Yeah. It's abysmal. And so, like, we don't have a... Well, now we have a work Microsoft account, but whenever I started, we didn't. And that complicated things a lot. Because I became, like, a de facto IT guy and just trying to deal navigate not only typical, you know, computer stuff, but whatever else Microsoft is putting out on top of that. And the mandatory updates interfered with a lot of our, like a lot of our operational systems. Yeah. So I believe that they no, they're, they're, uh, they're really consistent about being too involved about, uh, making decisions that are unpopular. Like it, it, Microsoft's been a, a, a tough company to root for in a world full of tough companies to root for. Yeah. Like even uh, here I've, with, I've uh, never been a fan. Even here with 10 paces, like either OBS discord or Microsoft will update and just throw off all of our settings. Oh yeah, I bet. I bet. That's the thing about uh, Microsoft. They, they, they never get enough credit for how uh, they cornered the sucking ass market, you know? <laughs> like, for, for a long time, they got all the shit 
uh, and they got really they really got away from that. Uh, yeah, I think just, just they were really enough su- away to get back up to it. Heck yeah. Well, I think what happened is honestly they that's why the Xbox became more of the uh popular kid, you know, cooler guy console because they don't care nearly as much about digital ownership rights especially back then. Mhm. I think honestly they thought let's abandon this this sounds extremely snooty and I don't mean it that way. This informed uh you know, group, these informed uh, consumers and just like pitch to a group that's not going to give a fuck that uh, we're always online or whatever, you know? Right. Always online? Yeah, I always have internet. Check out this mouth. Ooh, I love that. (laughs) I used the oval tool for the team and then I lined them. (laughs) That looks rad. (laughs) This is my, remember, this is my penance. You know, I have, it has to be rad. Yeah, it has to be rad. It has to fuck. It's got a, a big name to live up to. Mm hmm. Mr. Rad Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be confused with Mr. Rad Fuck. <laughs> I'm rad, old Mr. Fuck. <laughs> Don't confuse me with Radfuck. He's a calm artist. <laughs> you yeah, want to go Radfuck. down to the creek? Smoke meth with me? Oh boy, Mr. Radfuck. That sounds that sounds <laughs> rad. It's gonna be. <laughs> and I'm wow. not Mr. Radfuck. Shit. You done got me! I have to give you my pot of gold! (laughs) Deborah's got it right now, though. Uh, You're gonna have to come with me. Hop inside my Ford Fiesta! (laughs) He's the Rumpelstiltskin of (laughs) Middle Missouri. (laughs) All Missouri. I got promoted, Missouri. <gasps> Mr. Radfuck. I, I thought I'd never see you again. <laughs> and I'm, st- I'm still fucking Mr. Fuck. <laughs> Don't test me now, child. Let's <laughs> get that, uh, that Mr. Fuck dowry. <laughs> That's right. I will get my hands on the fuck fortune. <laughs> What is the fleshy pink tone to this green? Can you help me with that? The fleshy pink tone to what green? This this yellow green that Mr. Fuck is. Are you I'm, for, like, you see his lip there? Or? His lip. What what's the pink oh, fleshy okay. version of that skin tone? Um it's gonna look like do you have the color panel open? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do that. Yeah, so you want to kind of stay on that. Maybe go a little warmer. Lighter and redder, yeah. And a little darker into like the the grays and browns. Find something that looks good to you. We'll try that, we'll try that. (laughs) I like it, I like it. Fuck! Don't go call him my name unless you want something. (laughs) Don't go call him my name unless you want to hear an F word. (laughs) That's all I drop. That's right. I'm rad ass, Mister Fuck. (laughs) It's Fuck's Miss Eve, everybody. (laughs) So long and good night. Mm. I'm giving him lips. Oh yeah, I love some <laughs> upper lip action. Speaking of lips, I just finished that uh, first season of One Piece. 
Oh live my goodness. Action. Yeah. And how'd you like it? Um with any adaptation they're gonna make choices and not all of them I agree with, but you know, I I respect it as a, a product. Good, good. Uh, I, I had a blast with it, man. I loved immensely. Uh, I thought Sabzi's actor was incredible. Yeah, yeah. He, I, I thought he... They, they brought a, a, an interesting sort of maternal nature. They brought out his existing sort of interesting maternal nature. Yeah. I mean... Brought it forward, I don't know, sort of. Being live action, I think him being as overtly just horny uh -huh. would have been kind of like very off-putting <laughs> i mean yeah you, you know i uh i've heard that about him before i think ultimately he literally couldn't it regardless of whether it was off it was off-putting or not it wasn't even an option like there is no world where he was going to turn his legs into a tornado and like chase random women with hearts over his head you know what i mean yeah there's some um, things that just aren't conveyed well outside of cartoon. Yeah, there's there's a heightened, you know, it's it it, it, it the same thing happens with stage to video. Mhm. Mm some sometimes even jokes, they just when you're not in the room, they're completely different. Yeah. Um and they were so aware of that with the one piece live action. So many of those changes that you probably don't like, I recognize as them addressing that stuff, you know, more broadly. Yeah, uh, I mean, I know there's production mechanics that go into a lot of it as well. Yeah, they um, spend all their money on sets. Yeah, so they had to cut a certain character out because I imagine that character would have been expensive. Oh, uh, yeah, special yeah. Special effects yeah. wise, yeah. Well, I mean, and uh, uh, who needs them? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, they they do little things to kind of nod to the fan base and be like, hey, at least here's this, or no, that's not even the right way to put it. Um, bat Bat 07, Bish what? Bat Bat 07, no, I am Bat. Bat Bat 07, you are Bat. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, we had the old overlay up. Is what you're gonna that, carry that, that weight, kid? Are you gonna you're gonna carry that weight? Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> no, I absolve myself of any responsibility. No, I was you don't get to bad. do that. No, 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 wait, because that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I, you, you know, that's my spot. That's my you. You're, you're really uh, blowing my spot by trying to absolve yourself of any. No, I am. I am guiltless. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, because I'm guiltless. But <laughs> you can be something else. You know, there's a lot of other options. Guilty. No, this is this is my stream. This is my kangaroo court. <laughs> well, Aaron told me I was the sheriff, so I don't know about it being your kangaroo court. You listen to I, I me. You stroll here. Into my town. Uh huh. Claiming to be sheriff. Yes, yes. Well, I'm not claiming to be sheriff. That has an implication that I'm not the sheriff. I just am the uh, sheriff. I ain't see no badge on you. Well, that's because we're not on face cam. <laughs> <laughs> if you did, if we were, you would see my badge. Well, guess who holds all the cards? My I badge could shut lets this me shut this whole thing down right now if I wanted to. I'm sure. I'm sure. You, well, you could try. But the thing is, my badge gives you... me the ability to be pushy. It's my bushy, and you are not going to stand between me and my bushy. Well, you can take your bushy and don't hit your tushy. On the way out. <laughs>